It is Thursday, January 7th of 2021. I gotta get used to saying that. I'm, you know, after a whole year of Guy's Daily Drives, even though it wasn't like every day, but getting so used to saying 2020 to now say 2021, I actually have to think about it. I have to think about it before I do the intro. And what a long intro it's been for Guy's Daily Drive. Bam! Good morning, Martin. I see you there. I don't know if you've made a comment, but I can't read it, so it doesn't matter right now. If you did, I'll see it later. It is Thursday after a very weird Wednesday, which we're not going to talk a whole lot about. However, on Tuesday, which was the last time I did a Guy's Daily Drive, even though I haven't edited, edited, edited it, wow, tough to say, or posted it yet, which kind of probably goes hand in hand with having done anything with it yet. Uh, I went downtown, downtown DC, to get my first uh, COVID shot. And I'm glad it was Tuesday and not Wednesday, because I don't want, didn't want to be anywhere near downtown DC yesterday. Too much insanity. So I got the shot, and they make you wait like 15 minutes after you get it. You know, pretty standard. And I was fine. Uh, drove home, picked up Chipotle for the wife and me, and uh, got home had a, uh, you know, those burritos they make in Chipotle, those things are, are freaking huge. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay. Uh, I don't know why people feel the need to stop their cars to make a left-hand turn in the middle of a busy intersection. But while it's not strictly against the law, <laughs> just go to the light or to a designated turn spot and do it there. And if you have to turn around, then do that instead of making anyone else's life miserable. Okay, anyway, back to what was going on. So I got the shot, picked up Chipotle, had a Chipotle huge-ass burrito, and they're really tasty, but oh my God, those things are so good. And not long, not long after that, I was, I was going to check in at work, you know, log in. But all of a sudden, I just felt so tired. And my arm, my right arm, which is where I got the inoculation, started to hurt. So I was like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on logging in and see how I feel in a few minutes. And in a few minutes later, I was pretty much asleep. <laughs> Slept for a good part of the afternoon. And when I woke up, still didn't really feel right. Um, and my, my arm was still aching. And when I went to bed that evening, didn't have, you know, even though I had taken a pretty long ass nap, I uh, still didn't have any trouble going to sleep. So, you know, I mean, common sense would tell me that it's possibly or most likely because of the, um, the, the COVID-19 vaccination I got, and it probably was, you know, some kind of minor reaction to it. But it wasn't that big of a deal other than just, you know, if, if, if I'm a little tired and my arm hurts after a shot, then that's, that's really not that, that big of a deal as far as reactions to a vaccine go. And when I woke up the next day, I was still feeling a little tired, but you know, not like I had the day before in my arm, but my right arm was like almost useless. It, it, 
was hurting so bad. But again, you know, not to the point that I couldn't get some things done. Uh, I logged into work, did some stuff at work. Uh, Tracy and I went over to uh, Costco to pick a few things up, including, now, one of the things that we're looking at getting is a stand mixer. Now, I've been doing a lot of um, bread making lately since all this started up. And not because bread's not available, it completely is. But it was just something I'd been thinking about doing and it was like, you know, we're here at home, so why not give it a try? And, you know, and we actually have a bread maker. And we've had it for a long time. I used it when we first got it and then I kind of stopped because I wasn't super satisfied with the results I was getting. One of the problems, I don't know how we went from downtown DC problems to vaccinations to bread making, but here we are. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with it. One of the problems with bread makers is you kind of just dump all the ingredients in and it does everything for you. You know, you've got some, some preset uh, settings that you know that need it and then uh, uh, proof it and then do everything that it needs to do and then you get a ding a while later and you have a loaf of bread except when it needs the bread at least the, the bread machine that we have it has this paddle on the bottom and it, it kind of spins around and does the need and, and that's fine it, you know it's that's what it's supposed to do but when you take the bread out later you've got this great big hole at the bottom of the loaf. And because of the size of the pan in our bread maker, the loaves tend to be like half the size of, at least as far as length goes, of like a loaf of bread that you would get from the store. And it's super tall and it's got this hole in the bottom of it. And it just, you know, that just didn't really make me super happy with, with the results. So I decided I was going to kind of take my own shot at it. And early, early results of bread making were not encouraging. <laughs> it was pretty bad. And that's kind of to be expected when, when, you, when you start doing something like this. I mean, I ate it, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really what I was expecting or wanting. And it took me a while. Uh, one of the things that, that you do a lot of bread recipes is you spend a lot of time kneading the bread so you're, you know, you're pushing and you're pulling and you're tugging and you're doing all and you're supposed to do this for like 10 minutes on this big this big loaf or this big uh, mound of dough and I don't know you know I, I just think that I'm, I'm not really good at kneading so uh, I, I've gotten better as time has gone on but I was looking for more of a recipe that I didn't have to need so much. And I found one that I thought was pretty good, except it required like six hours of proofing. So you, you'd put all the ingredients together, you'd mix them, and then you'd put them in a bowl, cover it with saran wrap or a towel or whatever, and then wait six hours for it to, to finish rising on its own. And that was just, you know, wow, that's, that's a huge time suck because even if you're doing other things, uh, you still have in the back of your mind that, that, you know, in however much time you have left, that you have to um, go back and, and finish this loaf of bread. So then I found another recipe that included uh, an ingredient to add more fat, which was a, a beaten egg. And that only required about an hour's worth of kneading for the first proofing. And I tried it, and it was surprisingly good. So it was like, okay, I'm going to try this again. And so I did, and I got similar good results. So I finally found a bread recipe, plain old bread recipe, that I'm happy with. And so now... 
uh, I'm probably going to move on to other things. You know, you know, I want to try baking other things. Don't know what yet, but I, one of the things I got for Christmas was a, a, a book by Paul Hollywood, and if you don't know who Paul Hollywood is, he's one of the hosts of the Great British Bake Off. It's something like that. I, I can't remember the exact name of the show, but he's a he's a, is a he's a baker from England who is well known as you know being an expert in breads and, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to go through his recipe book, and I'll, I'll have to do some converting because, of course, it's all in. It's all in um, English or England-style uh, quantities, whether it's done by weight or whether it's done by uh, measure. And I'll have to I'll have to do some converting to figure that out. But I'm really, really looking forward to it because I I'm actually enjoying baking more than I thought I would. But we were looking for I know I'm getting off the subject. Here, we were looking for a stand mixer, and that would take care of a lot of the kneading that that um, I don't like doing. And they had one at Costco. It was like $350. And I was, we were both kind of like, mm, I don't know if we want to make that kind of commitment to something that is more or less just a hobby for me. It's not like we're saving any, any real money making a loaf of bread a week you know it's not like not like buying bread is 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 killing us right now we've, we've got to find a way to cut down on how much bread that we consume because it's just too expensive well no and 350 dollars for a stand mixer just seemed a little ridiculous so we need a new hand mixer anyway so we got a uh, black and decker hand mixer and it's got a couple of dough hooks and it's, it is a hand mixer. And I've heard varying pros and cons of using a hand mixer with dough hooks for kneading dough. And I will, I will find out for myself. And if, it's, if it doesn't really do what I need it to do, then okay. Maybe, um, maybe I will take another look at getting this uh, a stand mixer. I don't think I'll get the one that they have at Costco for that much. Because it had, it had stuff that I didn't really need. Anyway, that's going to do it for today, I think. Thank you all so very, very much for joining me today on my drive to work here on Guy's Daily Drive. If you would like to contribute to the madness that is Guy's Daily Drive and the MyMac.com podcast, which I do every week, and the Mac to the Future livecast that I also do on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Just did one. So there's a new one of those out right now. You can help support me by going to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash MacParrot. You can make a one-time donation over at Coffee, coffee.com, ko-fi.com forward slash MacParrot. Or you can pay a pal by going over to paypal.me forward slash Mac Parrot. You can reach out to me through email, guy at mymac.com. I can be found on the Twitters. Twitter.com forward slash Mac Parrot. Twitter.com forward slash Vert Shark. VertShark.com is the website. You can go to YouTube, type in Vert Shark, and you will find all of my videos there. And while you're there, smash that like button. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when new stuff is posted. And then you can like, share, subscribe. Did you see it? Like, share, subscribe. Those are the three things that you got to do over there on the YouTubes. And I actually got our first, I think it's our first, bit of feedback for the Mac to the Future livecast from Ronnie Greer. Thank you, Ronnie. That we'll, we'll talk about that on the show on the Mac to the Future livecast next week. But I'm getting off topic and I'm here at work, so I got to go. Thank you all again so very much for joining me today. And I will see all of you next time right here on Guy's Daily Drive. Bye-bye.